Okay, I apologize, guys. I had a little technical difficulty. Power just went out, but I'm back here. I'm about maybe a few seconds late from starting my live video, but let's go first things. My name is Ronald Johnson, and what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. So if you're in a place where you lack self-esteem or confidence and it's affecting all facets of your life, this is where I can help because I have been there. I've been on both sides, so I'm a mindfulness coach. And I help people in that aspect, right? Careers, relationships, different things. So today's topic is to be about my emergency room visit. And, you know, when you think about emergency room, first thing you think about is, oh, my goodness, it's urgent. I got to go there. Something happened. Long lines, long waits. And obviously, if someone has a priority over you, let's say like a gunshot vi victim, you get bumped down the line and go before you. So... This is my first time going to emergency room in years, and I was first time going to emergency room during COVID. So I drove myself to emergency room. So let me tell you a backstory. The backstory is this: uh, for the past week, I was suffering from testicular test testicle pain, whatever the proper term is, but I was having discomfort in uh, my man parts, I guess you would say. And I first thought, okay, well, go away, and I should be fine, so it went away. And then by Saturday, it came back with a vengeance. I was like, okay, what's going on here? And as you know, you call your primary care physician. They're not usually open on weekends, and you can't get a hold of anybody. So they have a 1-800-24-hour nurse support. So I call that number. First, it's a person that's going to assist you and take your minor information, date of birth, first and last name, and all this stuff. So about 30 minutes later, a nurse calls me up. I says, look, you know, I'm having pain in my testicles. It's hard to sit down. It's just come from an IP and, and all this stuff. She says, I think you should go to the emergency room uh, ASAP. I'm like, oh my God, damn. After that, I said, I'm in Bellingham, Washington. I don't know what emergency room is. I hang up the phone, I Google it. And at the same time, I Google just you know, testicular pain. And my goodness, okay. Anytime you Google anything on Google, it can go from zero to you're going to die. So I went from UTI, for those that got my newsletter, UTI infection, it can be a tumor, it can be, I forget the term, but the easy way to describe it is testicle twist, where well, one testicle twist on top of another testicle, we're causing a no blood flow, flow to one testicle so they can die. Uh, it could be damage in an area, it could be a hernia. I mean, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm freaking out. So I found the hospital on Google. It's about 25 minutes away. No, about 20 minutes away. So I'm like, okay, I make sure I have everything ready. My driver's license, my wallet, uh, make sure I have my mask ready, grab my jacket. I'm at the door, drive there. And <clears throat> it's a big hospital in Bellingham. So first thing is I go through the door, uh, what it says main office, because obviously I don't know how things work with COVID. There's no signs. And I'm waiting in line, and the lady's on the phone talking to somebody else. She's like, hey, are you here to visit somebody? I said, no, I'm actually here to see a doctor. So luckily, one of the patients was kind enough to say, hey, you go out the double doors, go a few flights of stairs, there's a door into your left. So I walk out the door, up a few flights of stairs, stairs, there's a door to my left, I go in, and I'm expecting, uh, I guess you, I was expecting lobby is full, I can't get seen because of COVID, patients are overrun. Uh, that it wasn't the case. So I walked in there, and obviously, you get stopped right there at the double doors. I think you walk through a small left door, there's another door. So it stops you. Stop right there. Take your temperature. They ask you minor questions. Have you been exposed to COVID? Have you had COVID? And it's just no, they give me a, a wristband. I walk through the double doors after a minor check in. Now I go to the nurse's station, I guess, or check in station, whatever you call it, and I check in. And I'm looking around, left to right, no lines, no lobby, everything is great. And nurse takes my information. There's even a nurse there at a mask to the side, drink a cup of coffee. Everybody's in relaxed mode. So the person takes my information, first time there. The nurse that had the mask off to the side, puts the mask on, takes me in, blood pressure. And you know the rest of the story, right? So perfect, I get a bet right away. So I didn't talk to a doctor, but it was a PA, which stands for physician's assistance at that time. So what the physician assistant does, he takes the minor, let's say, and analysts ask you questions. How many sexual partners have you had? Okay, I'm not concerned about STDs. Uh, he asked me, have you heard of someone? I says no. So what he does is just give you a description. They do a minor visual, if there's any lesions, right? Nothing. 
I go right to the bathroom. He says, hey, take this cup, take a urine test. Okay, what's going on? All right, so I do that, give it to the PA. In comes a nurse that's on duty in that particular ward or location. Asking kind of questions, am I okay? Check if you have any abdominal pain. Abdominal pain. I said no, everything's good. And after that, then I'm waiting, waiting game. So one hour goes by. Uh, nurse comes in. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Then obviously the beds are filling up to my left and right. So you know this is a curtain between everything's going on. One lady got attacked by a dog. Fingers were kind of mangled a little bit. One guy was chainsawing his house. Fingers got cut. I think one person was there because they have some kind of heart issue. Not sure what it was, but you know, nobody's full with COVID patients. If you're wondering, right? So this comes in, says, "Hey, test come back. You got no ETI." I'm like, "Great." She says, "Okay, well, the PA physician assistant is going to order you uh, to have uh, ultrasound, so like a baby, but this time on your testicles, right?" So lady comes in about an hour later, rolls me in to the place, they do a little ultrasound. Like a heart's racing, like, oh my goodness, what is going to happen? What is this going to be like? Do I have a tumor? Do I have a twist? Do I need surgery? My palms start sweating like crazy. We also back in. Nurse comes in again about an hour late. Are you okay? I'm fine. And um, so obviously no STD either. We don't know. All right, so I'm wait, wait, wait. I got there about 1.30. I wasn't seen again to about 5.45 p.m., right? So I waited there about almost, let's say, four to five hours. And the PA comes in and says, well, Ms. Johnson, um, we can't seem to find no tumor, no twist, no UTI infections, no infections, no uh, also too sometimes and testicles, anything good, um, an infection which creates a fluid around that area can cause discomfort and pain. Nothing of that sort. And it's like, well, it seems like you have a clean bill of health. And I just walk out. I said to myself, well, doc, could it be sex? Yes. Could it be working out? Yes. Could it be a lot of different things? Yes. So the whole point of that story is one. First thing is I always suggest if you're going through difficult, well, actually, the first, all I got was a prescription for 600 milligrams of ibuprofen. I went to Walgreens. There was a line there. I shredded. I threw it up, threw it away, and got Advil because it's the same thing. It's just that you got to take three Advil versus one pill. So I went home. I started taking Advil. Um, you know, two pills every you know four to five hours, and the pain went away. So I'm happy. I had nothing going on that was like threatening, and very satisfied the fact it was maybe something anomaly. It was stress. And what the doctor related to check checking with your primary care physician, but it can relate to stress. You know, most of us don't realize stress is really internal. And we going through stressful events, it can affect you in a lot of different ways. But just the mindset, okay, I'm going to stress, I'm thinking about it. Stress can be a different way. Stress can be, well, I work out a lot because I'm stressed. Uh Stress can also be experience internal, which you mean racing the heart. It could be you sweaty palms. It can be a lot of ways. So doctor said it could be as simple as this stress or maybe more sex or something of that. Or I could have injured deadlifting. Who the hell knows? But pump you guys out there is that when you're experiencing anything that's abnormal, don't wait to go to the hospital. Go right away. And if you're experiencing things as when it comes to behavior mindset, the help you need. Do not wait and hope it's away. Get what you need because you never know what could be going on internally that you just don't see. Contact a life therapist, a life coach, a psychologist, whatever you need to live a better life because you have to to live better and be better and have the value. So, hope you enjoyed the story. It was definitely I don't know if it's scary, but new talking about something personal, but it's a good outcome. And definitely my heart goes out to those out there that are facing any kind of issues that were like mine were life threatening. I was able to walk out, clean bill of health, but anybody has cancer, tumors, or difficulty, uh, prayers go out to you. I hope you recover and everything's okay. But if you ever need to find me, you can find it under www.rosandcoaching.com. Click on the secret call. Let's book a call, let's talk, let's see who you are, and this is where I can help you. Thanks for listening, 
Again, sorry about technical difficulties, power went out, power got back on, and hope you enjoy my testimony. And if you want to subscribe to my newsletter because you missed that, go to my website, www.ronjohnsoncoaching.com. Go to the bottom where it says Two Tip Tuesday, subscribe to the newsletter because I have offer value in the sense that you get the tips you need to live a much better life. And thanks for listening.